Ninja. <laughs> the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Kyle Silver! place in this whole wide world, and I know I'd be satisfied. Way up on the mountain, or way down in the valley, I know I'll be happy, any place, anywhere, I don't care, in the misty moonlight. By the flickering firelight Any place is all right As long as you are there In the misty moonlight By the flickering firelight Any place is all right visiting me here way out on in the vineyards in paradise there's balloons going up and we're having a great conversation 
I'm still working on um, the Suisun language, Southern Patwin Suisun language, and the colonists of early um, Spain and then Mexico. I do reenactments. I work with um, different groups and still continue in my writing and on about the times where the world changed when all these colonists brought up a whole new era. Okay. Now, when you graduated, did you go to college? I went to Immaculate Heart College in Los Angeles. Okay. They are no longer there. The sisters got angry with the Archbishop and they left and um, I came home for a while and then I took management many years later at uh, St. Mary's College. I have one paper to finish before I graduate, okay. hopefully, maybe. So, um, otherwise I've just been doing what I consider academic things, but not affiliated with anybody. I call myself an independent historian. Okay, now, you lived in Sonoma for a while. Uh, right after my father died, I moved from Menlo Park. That was my first place, Sonoma. I what years Sonoma. were they, more or less? Let's see, eight, nine, eight, nineteen, nineteen, eighteen, nineteen, nineteen eighty-nine to about two thousand five. Um, okay. And then I moved over to Napa and, and I was working in the wine industry, mostly because I wanted to learn about the wine industry for the history of General Vallejo and what he did with wine. So I learned all different aspects and then end up um, doing accounting for different wineries. Okay. And now just m uh, trying to do mostly history, but also need a little bit of influx from some wineries. Tell us about, you, you also had a sailboat, or several boats. You uh, loved being on the water. The state historian had um, a 100-foot Chappelle schooner, and we lived on that for four and a half years, sailed the bay, sailed the delta, had intentions of going around the world, but I didn't want to sell all my stuff, all my research and everything, so I stayed behind. And then I bought a little 23-footer uh, Bay Lady, it's the sister ship of Treka, who sailed around the world. It was a, it was a yawl, wasn't it? Yeah, Treka was yellow, mine was white. But, but it was a yawl, though. It was, yeah. And, okay. But my mother was sick, and I w someone else was taking care of her and forgot to close the hatch in a big storm, and they called me to say the mast was sticking out. So it sank, and I oh. gave her to um, the Sea Scouts. So that ended my sailing days. Oh, I sailed with Master Mariner's people, different friends for a while, okay. but haven't sailed in a while. Interesting. Who was your closest friend in high school? Andy Camp. Yeah, you saw her at the 50th. Yeah, I saw her at the 50th, and we've talked a couple times since then. Okay. So that was really wonderful. Yeah. Well, and I heard from Dick Vose and um, okay. Doug Stoby was, I have been doing producing programs on the history of California set to my grandmother's music. And Doug Stoby was part of that when I was at St. Mary's, my history, my senior project was I produced and wrote, directed and produced a musical, a three hour musical, telling the history of California. And he came up and was my chief Solano for me and helped me with the um, with the musical and did some uh, we did some other concert work too. Tell me about you also did some uh, summer uh, stock theater in uh, Volcano, California. It was actually in Dry Town. Dry Town, okay. I was very much younger, uh, a girly okay. and um, yeah for 18 years I did um, vaudeville um, melodramas, but I did the song and dance, the oleos in, in between, and then um, did that, and then joined another group down in San Carlos, and was in charge of that, that San Carlos Chicken's Ball. If you see the movie San Francisco, uh, they all go down to the Chicken's Ball. It was a big event mm -hmm. in San Francisco that raised money um, for charities. So they do redo that, and it's still going on in San Carlos for the schools. And one day my dad said, if you're doing that, why don't you do mother's music, his mother's, which is my grandmother Francisca's. And now I use exclusively her music to do my programs. I found out that all her music had been at Dominican, now university, 
and it, would, it was with the American Music Center there, which was looking into the old mission music and the, uh, things like that. And Sister Mary Dominic, a friend of my grandfather's, was in charge of that. But she got multiple sclerosis. She was in Oxford talking about this, and she passed away. Mm. And that music collection was sold to Colorado, where it is now. But the school called me, or she called me right before she left and said, nobody seems interested in Francisca, so do you want it? And I was in my little Volkswagen tearing up the road, and I now own her music collection, oh. which is thousands of individual music, operas, double piano. So talented. And so, anyhow, that's what I... I first knew, m met you in sophomore class. Mr. Summers had a class of speech. I think your brother Peter might have been in that class, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a crush on you in the sophomore year. Oh, you did? And I thought that name Martha was the finest name in the world. And when I met my wife Martha, that was one of the key elements. Well, I'm glad because you guys have been happy for a long time. Yeah, uh, 39 years of marriage. Oh, wonderful. So. Yeah. Hi, Martha. Yeah. Well, anything else you want to say? And no, I think that history is very important. Um, mm -hmm. When I went down to Immaculate Heart, I had a, God, I've forgotten his name now, a history teacher. And I remember I got my first C. And I met him years later, but he had Alzheimer's and he didn't remember me because I wanted to say, oh, it's funny. You're the one that gave me the C. Me. Yeah, because now I'm really into the history. And Interesting. So. Well, thank you. Hold back the rushing minutes. Make the wind lie still Don't let the moonlight shine Across the lonely hill Dry all the raindrops Hold back the sun My world is ended My baby's gone The milkman whistles softly as he comes up to my door The mailman brings the letters by just like he did before They seem so busy all day long as though there's nothing wrong It's close to where I grew up, which is mm -hmm. in Menlo Park in Atherton, um, which is like saying it's where Moses led the urbanites. Okay. And you, um, 
You dated some of the real popular girls at school. I was very fortunate to uh, to be able to do that. I was kind of a a lone duck in high school in that it seemed that everybody at MA uh, had gone to grade school, what we call middle school, and then on to MA. But I came out at the end of the eighth grade, uh, finished the eighth grade at Hoover uh, in Redwood City, mm -hmm. and then went on to Menlo Park, uh, to Menlo Atherton because we lived in that area. Uh, so. I literally knew no one going into high school. That's both an advantage and a disadvantage. Uh, I was not a member of any of the cliques or clubs that were already established or being established. Um, I hadn't been on any sports teams, um, and the system itself was blissfully unaware of who and what they had with Terry Murphy. So it, it took a little time. It, it was a plus because it allowed me to, uh, to go to various gatherings of people who would otherwise be uh, in a cloistered environment, like the Algonquins and some of the other Senecans. So I could, I could go to the parties, um, but I didn't necessarily want to or have to belong. Uh, it was a disadvantage in that... Uh, once I entered the system as a freshman, it took a while for uh, the woman who was my counselor there, Mrs. O'Donnell, okay. Okay, who was a delightful woman, uh, to figure out what it was that she had. Because apparently, coming from Grand Rapids, Michigan, this was a big black hole for California educators. Um, so I started my freshman year in remedial math and remedial English. I lasted until the first test in math and the first paper in English before I was put in AP math and put in regular English. Um, and that kind of straightened that out vis-a-vis -vis the system um, and bode well for me to be able to do what I wanted to do and take the classes I wanted to take. Um, but as far as the sports were concerned, uh, I went out initially for Football, Frosh football, yeah, I remember. And and played two years at Frosh I got to know some of the guys there, and that put me into the groups that were having the various parties, like Algonquins and others. Um, and then later on, I, I had a, an incident with a PE instructor who was also a coach uh, in my freshman year. Uh, I was as a freshman already six foot, about 154 pounds, and in pretty good shape. And in the middle of that school year, I had intentions of playing basketball at that height, even though I wasn't very good at basketball, sure, I could learn. Um, and certainly playing baseball. Well, my PE instructor was Jim Loftus, who was the coach of both the basketball team and the baseball team. Bill Loftus. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bill. I, yeah. I, I choose not to remember names of okay. people, but I really don't like. I don't like him. And I guess he didn't like me much either. Um, in that we had an incident where we were in the gymnasium in the winter doing gymnastics at one end of the gym while the girls peed. Sure. was doing their gymnastics at the other end of the gym. I think there was uh, trampoline and a few other devices that they were on. Well, that, Mr. Loftus, we we'll call him that. Skull was the nickname. Okay. Uh, Mr. Loftus, instead of keeping an eye on his class and his students, was down there spending time, uh, I guess, hitting on the uh, good-looking, I don't blame him, uh, PE instructor for the girls that were down there. When my friend, he wasn't my friend then, but we ended up becoming friends, uh, Paul Marchand. Yes. His class, his group was up on the high bar. My group was on the pegboard, which is close. Um, and I'm spotting for the guy who's up on the pegs. And there were supposed to be spotters out there for Paul when he was up on the high bar. Well, Paul slipped and fell. And he hit hard. And I was right there near him 
my back turned, and heard him hit, turned around, kneeled down, and asked him if he was all right. The next thing I knew, Mr. Loftus had his hand on my shoulder and was pushing me against that filled concrete block wall that the gymnasium was made of. I didn't think I came off the wall with a red cross that dropped him just as the bell rang. <laughs> While four people looked down at this guy who was then on the floor, informing him that Murphy, his squad, was on the pegboard. I'll shorten the story by saying that PE instructor did everything he could to discourage me to do anything. He had me when we boxed I'm boxing against a guy that's taller than I am and outweighs me by 80 pounds. He was out for you. He was out. For he was out for me. But that guy ended up being a friend of mine, and I was a lot quicker than he was. Mm -hmm. um, but Loftus, in spite of his attempts, made it perfectly clear that if I bothered, bothered, that was his term, to go out for either basketball or baseball, He'd spike you. I would never play. This is in spite of the fact that between 8th grade and freshman year, I played Babe Ruth ball and batted over 500. I wasn't the only one. I can tell you the same stories, okay. similar stories, yeah. He was so very... He was just that kind of a guy. Yeah, very yeah. vindictive. Because he had the authority, it was clear to me that it was going to be an issue. So instead, I went out for track and field, which was not my finest. I was the best half-miler in the mm -hmm. high school. But I was not the finest half miler in the district by any stretch. Sure. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I met some nice people in doing it. But I pretty much ran a close, not in a group, just an individual. Sure. Um, and somehow managed to make it all the way through high school. Unfortunately, as happens with some families, my family, my stepmother and father, had some issues and they decided they would take it out on me and I had some choices to make and my choice ended up being to move out of the house um, at the beginning of my senior year some friends who I did know took me in so I ended up staying at MA and finishing high school there but along the way I had to work to make a living um, and I guess you'd say I just wandered a bit psychologically, and I didn't finish one paper for one class, and I didn't graduate with my class. So that's what hung it up, yeah. yeah. So, but that didn't keep me from going on. I went on to, uh, to college, mm -hmm. um, and eventually got drafted. Entered in 19, June of 1967, got drafted. Went to basic in El Paso, Texas, Fort Bliss. Then got transferred to uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana, what they call Tiger Town. Okay. Ended up in the infantry. Okay. Went to jump school. Went to Vietnam January the 8th, 1968. Ten days from the start of the Tet Offensive. To go through training as a long-range reconnaissance patrol squad leader. Okay. So I managed. To LERP wasn't it called a LERP or something like that? It's a LERP. And it was. We did. We were not that special then. Okay. And three months after my tour of duty, they took all of us and wrapped us into the 75th Ranger Battalion. Okay. So they started the Rangers. That was 1969. So I managed to. I finished my tour, I actually extended my tour for about okay. a little over two months because the Army came up with an early out program and I knew I wanted to get out of the Army. Okay. And I knew the job of being in the infantry in Vietnam and thought I could keep myself alive a little bit longer and then had the audacity to actually return home. And, and you found a woman and got married, and tell me about that. Eventually, well, I, I kind of wandered around. I, I would have to say that the experience of going through Vietnam left me as damaged, what I call damaged goods. Okay. I worked, I went back to school, I eventually went to Stanford. Um, but it took me about six years before I finally got my head together, okay. became somewhat proud that I had managed to survive Vietnam and the sure. Army. Um, 
but by then it was clear that what I really needed to do was make a living. So I started a construction, I eventually started a construction company, which I ran for 27 years. Very successful, by the way. And along the way, um, I took a job for Cetus Corporation for my best friend, who was general manager there, okay. who'd gone to Stanford and met him down mm -hmm. there uh, to get his MBA. And uh, I came back um, while I was building a hot tub, Redwood okay. hot tub, for my friend as a birthday gift for him. Uh, this woman came around the corner, five foot, three and a half, don't forget the half, 112 pounds, walking this 16 to 20 pound Lhasa Apso yeah, yeah. white attack dog and carrying a bamboo shafted golf club and wanted to know who the hell was I and what was I doing at her friend's house. I had a choice. I could either laugh, I could ignore her, or I could explain myself. I chose the latter. And her, to her surprise, she had heard about Murphy, and we introduced each other, and I had my first date with her that weekend, and the rest, as they say, is history. history. How long have you been, have been married? And, any kids? We've been married since 1978. And you have a couple of kids? Yes. Eventually, we made the decision that we both wanted to become parents. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was in, that was a Friday night. I was informed uh, by the Monday morning, the following Monday morning, as we were having breakfast together and going off to work. We both worked yeah. full time. But she thought she was pregnant. I found out, we, we found out later, uh, not only was it a multiple birth, yeah. but for, by the second sonogram, they were developed enough that the nurse practitioner could tell us what the sex was, and we found out that whatever it was that we wanted, we were going to get. We had a girl who became very precocious, very athletic, very overachieving, um, and went to UCLA and eventually to Tufts to get a master's degree in nice going. art history. We also had a son who was learning disabled, uh, ADD and dyslexic, sure. caused me to have to sue the school system in Orinda to get a good education for him, but he was worth it because he left with a decent GPA and managed to get him to UC Santa Cruz. Good for him. And got his degree, a co-degree, co in ecology and biology. And nice. he's currently the author of, I think he's working on his third book. And Amazing. And does art uh, for illustrations for other people's books. So, Tell me, uh, now, one last thing. You know, I, I know I've got to get running because I'm running out of battery. But tell me this. You're responsible for this beautiful building. Yes. And your efforts basically resulted in this thing being built when the other one was basically condemned and used for other purposes? It, it was a 1934 building that was a WPA project. Okay. That had seen better days and done better things, but it had served the community well. It had been a place where they could have planning commission. But your efforts were the ones that made this a reality. I was the principal veteran. Plank owner who basically helped design and have this built. Did, did all of the design work. There were architects who did it, interior and exterior. It became a labor of love. Well, you, you are... A love for the veterans who were rejected by society. Thank you very much. And where do you live? In Arinda, California. Okay. I've been here for 45 years. Um, I went to Berkeley and then graduated and came right over the hill into Bur into Arinda and I've okay. been there ever since. And what's your profession? Um, let's see, I've had a, a few. Um, but right now I'm, I deal in real estate. Okay. Um, just on a, a on my own account kind of a, a, a of a thing. I was a realtor at one point. Okay. Um, long, long time ago. I had a, uh, a career in San Francisco as well. Um, prior to that, I raised three children here in Orinda. Mm -hmm. They went to all the local How many schools. children? Three. 
And how old are they now? Uh, 30, 39, 36, 32. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, they all live nearby. Uh-huh. So so sort of involved in all of it. The family is very close. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, the rumor had it you became a psychologist, a psychiatrist? No, that's okay. not true. Okay, no. okay. Uh-huh. And Judy know. Evans, you Judy, used to be with Judy? <laughs> she and I were good friends uh, in, uh, in high school. We used to walk to, from MA home every day along the path on Middle Field. Okay. Yep. I haven't seen Judy since. Because you went to Ensenal together also? I went to Ensenal and then I went to Nativity for what went from its beginning. Days. You said you went to our house periodically. Well, one of your sisters yes. was in one of my Girl Scout troops. Okay. I, think, I think your mom actually was our Girl Scout leader. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and then your, your house was right next door to that school. Yeah, it was very close, within a block. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, yeah, so I went from there, so 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade okay. in nativity. So I sort of missed out on some of that okay. incidental thing. And you found out about this how? Well, Terry Murphy and I have known each other. He's a longtime resident of here, too, and we've been to a lot of you know city council meetings. And you didn't know that you were tied in with No, MA. but because of our first names, I think we always had sort of an affinity for one another, and I always just thought he was a good guy, and yeah. I, he knew what... You know a lot of things that were happening in town and what have you and we always just sort of liked each other and then we get this thing from you and i went is that why i had such an you know like a, a kind of a there was a bond of some yeah, sort yeah. and i went did he go to our high school you didn't even know that no well then when the picture was there i, I thought yeah i mean I, he did and maybe he says he knew but i'm not sure that that's the truth that we did that all what these an unusual that, coincidence yeah it, he's he says that he knew that I was that we both went to ME, but I don't really think he did. <laughs> That's a miracle. Yeah. So. Again, I've spent probably four years, many, many hours trying to locate you exactly. I didn't know that you were on such a almost personal pursuit. I mean, and kudos to you for, yeah. for all of that. That's because a lot of them were never invited to any of the reunions and say, they don't care about me. And you know, there's bonds, those early years of friendship. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and also we didn't have Facebook or Internet or any mm-hmm. other ways. Like, my children are very involved with, with sure. the, the kids from their high schools still. They're, I mean, and it is nice that you've taken so much, you know, time and energy to put all well, this Well, I hope when you start getting the videos, you enjoy them. Uh, I've made probably uh, 110 or 20 videos. Oh, that's so cool. You're going to like it. You see lots and lots of... I've interviewed uh, 215 classmates already. Oh, nice. And uh, you're going to enjoy it That's very great. much. That's great. Thanks for giving me the time. Hi. Uh, well, at, at, at Menlo Atherton, I was Sue Hill. And um, now I'm Susan Hill McEntee. Okay. And I've kept the hill because I use that on my paintings. And you're a prolific artist, too. Um, I've, I've been painting, um, it feels like most of my life, yeah. It's, and it's what medium do you use? Watercolor. Okay. But that wasn't, oh, that wasn't what I originally thought I was going to do, but it just, I sort of fell into it, and it, it's a good fit, mm-hmm. and, uh, and so I've been doing it for um, probably 40 years, 45 years. Whose uh, watercolors do you use? What producer? What? Um, it, it, excuse me, what do you mean? Uh, whose brand of uh, paint? Um, oh, well, I use several. Uh, I, I use a French paint, and, and I, I've used the Franck and Bourgeois. Uh huh. Okay. I use that, mm-hmm. and I use a, 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 a Selenier, okay. and um, uh, Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton. Okay. Those those three okay. mostly. Mm-hmm. So, after you graduated, what happened? Um, after oh after I graduated from high school, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah, going yeah. far back. Um, I went to the University of Oregon, okay. and for four years. And after I graduated from that, and and I had um, two different MA classmates. That uh, Anne sure. Hillary was my okay. roommate my first year, and and then the last two years I I lived with Pam Johnston, 
and she went to MA, I think her first two years, and then she finished at Crystal Springs. Okay. So, so she's not, it hasn't been part of the reunion okay. stuff, but uh, um, uh, after college, um, I came back to the Bay Area, and I had a degree in fine arts, which kind of qualifies you to do nothing, I found <laughs> out. Okay. Very fast, I found out. Um, and some of the job interviews, they would say, well, you know, people come here, they, 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 there's so many people that want jobs like that, that, that they work for free, or it, it was really something. So I, I had, um, I worked for a department store for a year, which I really hated, and then I went to work for a dentist, and I hated that even more. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta find a fit somewhere. And. Uh, um, but the best thing that happened out of um, out of the, the dental job was the, the the dentist sent me to dental school for um, a, sort of a limited period of time. But but they were trying to start a new profession uh, called expanded dental duty dental, uh, and it was going to be like being a hygienist only you did fillings. Okay. And and through that program. I won't tell you the whole story, but sure. anyway, I, I, I met the man that was going to be my husband. Oh, interesting. And so at, at the graduation, I told the, the the dean of the dental school that the best thing that had happened to me was, was me the man. and Brendan. Wonderful. <laughs> How long have you been married to Brendan? Um, we are about to celebrate, in three more weeks, our 45th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Yes. It's a very happy marriage. Mm -hmm. we, uh, uh, we really enjoy each other's company. Um, we've lived in the the East Bay, first in Oakland, then mm -hmm. in Walnut Creek, and now in Lafayette for 32 years. Wonderful. And the house we're in now, um, we did a tear down remodel, and I got to design the house. Where did you live in the meanwhile? Uh, we lived in Walnut Creek. Our house in okay. Walnut Creek was so reasonable that we could afford to stay there. Okay. Because people ask when they see the yeah. house, they say, "Oh, did you live here?" And I mean, you would have had to pitch a tent. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's been a, a wonderful life there, and. Um, uh, late in life, we adopted a, a, a child, a baby. Oh, for what country? At birth, um, and that was uh, an American baby. Oh yes, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, we it, because we did consider um, um, adopting a girl in China, and we went to a lawyer, and he said, "Well, is there some political reason why you want to adopt a Chinese baby?" Yeah, yeah. Because if, if, if you want to, you can certainly have a child that looks just like you. <laughs> wow. And uh, and we do. Really? The, the birth mother picked us out, and, <sighs> and we, we knew her. Um, um, I mean, we yeah. didn't know her before the mm -hmm. process, but we got to know her. Um, and, uh, uh, and we've just been very happy what a to treat. be parents. What yeah. a treat. How old is she now? She is 22, and she's what they call a super senior at <laughs> Monterey, um, Cal State Monterey Bay. Okay. Yeah, she'll, so she'll graduate next year. And uh, uh, she loves horseback riding and scuba diving. And, uh, and you, are you a horsewoman? Um, I was as a child. Okay. But I had, um, I had back trouble. Uh, when I worked for the dentist, it started when I worked okay. for the dentist, and um, I, I'm going to give myself one more ride on horseback because we're going to take her horse to the beach before she leaves Monterey. Nice. Uh, we really, because they still allow you to ride on the beach there, and okay. and I think that would be a real treat. What would be that neat? Uh, I could I could ride him. She would let me ride him if I if I wanted to, but but I think it's not a good idea. Yeah, why risk it? Yes, yes. It's At our the, age, you don't need a fall. It's the bouncing. The compression of the, uh -huh. the back yeah, lumbar. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, anybody you uh, can remember you haven't been able to see in high school that was a friend or you wonder what happened? Um, well, um, when I went to the 50th, I got, I got to see Did you have fun running around to everybody? I did, I did. Uh -huh. And... Uh, 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 
uh, Zemi Peters lived right on the same street as I did sure. growing up, and so it was it, it was uh, fun to see her and Janice Detler. We had been friends in grade school, and um, um, she's and, as lively as she was back then. Yes, and I had run into Leslie McLaren before the okay. the. Um, uh, uh, um, I think the year before, because okay. she uh, has joined the, the the Botanical Art Society that okay. I belong to. Okay. Um, but the real reason I went to the reunion was to get to see Anne Hillary. Yes. She's a good dancer, isn't she? Um, yes, she is. So yes, we hope is. to see her in Tahoe. Uh. <laughs> yes. So be about September of next year. Okay. That's my, one of my reasons for going uh, to Tahoe now is to scout out and uh, select the venues and what's oh, going to happen. Oh, picked it out yet. Yeah, and I, I, I want to see what's available because you're just after Labor Day to see uh -huh. if otherwise we'll have to do it before, but I think after is what we're looking at. Uh -huh. You surprised me. I am so pleased you showed up today with your well, husband, it, it's Brandon. kind of hard not to when you have it right in my town. <laughs> it would be pretty... That wasn't by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Intentional. Uh-huh. Oh. So, yeah, well, that's good. I mean, uh -huh. and... We have wonderful people in our class. Uh huh. A lot of great yes. people. Well, thank you, and I'm off and running. Dreams that you dream of, dreams really.